Try again. Hello, caller, you're on the air. Yes, uh, I have a question for you. Um, I've read the congressional reports on MK Ultra. I've read the Fritz Springmeyer, the Kathy O'Brien, the Tex Mars, even some David Icke, pretty much everything I could get my hands on. And in your opinion, I, I know you don't want to speculate about stuff you can't prove, but I'm just asking you in your personal opinion from everything you've studied and everyone you've interviewed, the monarch mind control, is it real? Is it like they're talking about? Is, is, is that, are our leaders really doing this to children? Absolutely, 100 percent. Wow, that's just, that thing, that's amazing. The Manchurian I, Candidate film you see is how it really is done. I feel like I just got punched in the stomach because I, I've read the Kathy O'Brien, Mark Phillips book. I, it, it's almost unbearable to read. It's so horrible, and yet... I don't know about their particular story, though I didn't believe it five years ago, and have independently confirmed it in other research. Well, I know. Other people are telling the exact same story. Well, it's not just that. I keep running into things that, in, in, in just obscure places, mainstream news reports, that fit with their story after the fact. Can you give me an example of that? Yeah, uh, take Senator DeCamp's Franklin cover-up book. Yes, I've heard of that. I'd like to read it. I've interviewed him. That there's a text of the interview on the website. Uh, again, it's a complex discussion, a, a complex topic. But, look, the ninja a thousand years ago in Japan could take somebody, drug them, give them prostitutes, train them for decades. they go commit an assassination and 100% of the time commit suicide. The Order of the Assassin did that in the Middle East also. They did, exactly. And so just social control, just elite training, you're the elite, this is what you're doing, can make a kamikaze, can make a ninja. Now that's ancient technology. Yes. You know, public mind control in southern Mexico, uh, 500 years ago, a mother would bring their child to have their heart cut out and was happy to do it. That's old-fashioned mind control. With PCP, LSD, uh, electroshock, uh, they can't do it in three days, like Manchurian Candidate says. It, it, it takes at least a month. You can make, if the person has the right mindset, you can make somebody do exactly what you tell them with keywords. They will be, they will compulsively do it. Uh, and it's a real science. It's congressionally admitted. And so, yes, sir, uh, it's the real deal. And it's funny in the Manchurian Candidate that I saw and thought was pretty good uh, Sunday night. And by the way, the producer and the director said in a Vanity article, a Variety article, excuse me, that this is what they really think is going on. This is what they think is real. So they believe it, too. It's part of the awakening process. Uh It's funny that Mr. Muhammad, the, the D.C. shooter, lived in the same building with B Buford Furrow, the guy who shot up the, the Jewish center. And Mr. Furrow lived at a time in Houston a few years before that with Larry Ashbrook that shot up the Baptist youth meeting five years ago in Fort Worth, killing, I think it was like 15 people. And all these guys are interconnected, and they're all from, they're all Gulf War veterans. They're all in the same, or military veterans. They're all living at the same military bases for some reason. They all have the, uh, McVeigh was a Gulf War vet. The same story over and over again. But you're going, well, that's stretching it. Let me give you evidence. And in the time constraints, I'll just give you four or five. Larry Ashbrook was a military veteran, hung out with another admitted mind control individual. Larry Ashbrook, who went in and shot up the uh, Baptist Church in Fort Worth a few years ago, he was writing the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, going, listen, I was in a Navy experimental program. I do not want to kill people. They're ordering me to do it. Because he started breaking down, they went ahead and activated him. And then he, he did the disposal mechanism and blew his head off. Neighbors, this was in the news, saw, a week before he did it, a black van pull up, drag him out, kicking and screaming. This was seen. Guys in black uniforms dragging Larry Ashbrook out of his house. He's writing letters. Help me. I'm about to kill. Uh, you know, freaking out, begging neighbors. They're ordering me to. He was trying to break his conditioning. People grab him. He writes his last letter going, they've grabbed me. They've, they've redone it. I, I, I'm going to do it. He goes in and starts shooting people and then blows his own head off. McVeigh is in a special forces program 
disappears for a few years, travels the whole country, pops back up with these Arabs who are admitted CIA, bombs the building, is pulled over. This was in the Daily Oklahoma on, uh, on April 20th, 95. State police see an erratically driving white late uh, old car. A guy gets out drooling and vomiting saying, I've got a chip. Hell, I've got it. It's in my ass. Help me. Falls to his knees and begins vomiting. God help me, I've got a chip, it's in my ass. No license plates, white car driving erratically. He just cooked a bomb that would normally blow up on anybody. Highly volatile, pulls it up perfect, does all this. And then now, two hours later, he's foaming at the mouth going, Chips, chips, help me. And that's all we know from the paper. One of the state police that tried to blow the whistle on this got death threats. Won't, won't be interviewed by anybody else. But you're thinking, well, that's a stretch. McVeigh's just crazy. Do you know who McVeigh's doctor was for the six and a half years before they executed him? Who, who was there days after he was taken into custody and who moved with him in Denver and Terre Haute, Indiana and followed him around? Do you know who his government-appointed doctor was? Dr. Jollyan West, who is listed in the MK Ultra hearings in 77 for running an entire CIA mind control operation. <laughs> My God, they publicly got him in there. He's in there handling McVeigh, dealing with him, drugging him, all of this, and taking him through his execution. He died, by the way, last year. Dr. Ewing Cameron lost in civil court. It's admitted. Even the History Channel has an hour long special. The founder of the American Psychological Association had hundreds of innocent people kidnapped and taken to his facility in Toronto, had another one up in Montreal. And they admittedly, they have the women, they have the men. They would you would go in for a psychological evaluation, your psychologist would or psychiatrist would be CIA. This is admitted. They'd say, sign these forms. I'm going to check you in the hospital for a week. Sure, doctor. These were a lot of middle class or wealthy people. They would sign the form that allowed them to be taken away. They'd disappear for a year. They would come out with a new personality, new name. No, uh, and they admittedly, PCP, LSD, electroshock, audio recorders, headsets, 24 hours a day recording who they were, what they were going to do. Keyword triggers. This is the founder of the American Psychological Association. So I hope that answers your question. Is mind control real? Well, the Nazis, just with social programming of you're the elite, you're the men, we're defending the Reich, stop that Jew's brains out. They call it the cement of blood. They would do it. Shoot that baby in the head. Stick a water hose down that woman's throat and blow her guts out her hind end. Yes, sir. Heil Hitler Fuhrer, they would say. The ninja, trained for 10 years, commit a murder, and then commit suicide. Stick a knife in themselves and... Just, just with normal conditioning and programming. Just with social peer pressure. Stick a knife in. Ah, drive it up. Ugh, seppuku. But in 2004, the government can't do that. doesn't exist. So that's the reality.